When it comes to our homes, we kind of know what we need to do to decarbonise them. Insulate them to make them more efficient, power them with solar, heat them with a heat pump. Kind of straightforward, at least from a technology perspective. But when it comes to industrial processes like making paper, chemicals, food processing, beer brewing, uh, textiles, basically anything around you, that's where things get a little bit more complicated. And that's because the temperatures needed are a bit higher than a hot shower or a warm radiator and so currently aren't that well suited to heat pumps. So what do we do? Well, we're here at Caldera where they're doing something rather magical with vacuums, old engine blocks and volcanic rock. Welcome to the Everything Electric show. Like Everything Electric? You'll love our fun-packed Everything Electric expos around the world. Next up, we're in London and Harrogate. Remember, Energy and transport professionals go for free on the first day. And so this is it. These are Caldera heat cells and what they are is a vacuum container containing an ultra-conductive solid core made of melted engine blocks and volcanic rock. But why is any of that actually useful? What is it actually doing? Well, it's essentially storing intermittent renewable energy and storing it as heat that's available on demand. So if you can imagine that, say, there is a massive solar array over there or if there is solar on the roof, that would feed into these heat cells. It would heat an electric element, which would heat the inside up to 500 degrees C. That would be when the heat cell is full. And when that heat's needed, that's when water's fed in, it's turned into steam to about 100 to 200 degrees C and used for any industrial process that you might need. So it really is as simple as that. And I think that's the really cool thing. It's decoupling generation from usage by using storage in the middle, such that that renewable energy can be available on demand. Heat pumps are good up to about 100 Celsius, and then there's a whole range of these sort of industrial processes that go above it, and above 500 you start to get into cement and steel making, which are, I would, I would agree, are very hard to decarbonise. The biggest slug, though, is actually between 100 and 200. It's something like a fifth of all industrial heat is used in that temperature range, and for us it's really easy to tackle. So we actually see it as the low-hanging fruit that we can get into and make a huge dent on. When we look at the economics, it works today, it works in the UK, it works better in Spain and Portugal and Italy in places where it's sunny most, much more of the year. Because they're such big users of energy, you can have a big impact very quickly. It, you know, you don't have to go into a million homes, we could have the same impact going into 10 or 50 factories. So each of these heat cells works in a not too dissimilar fashion to a reusable water bottle in that because you've got a vacuum in there, it's not losing heat through conduction or convection. So whilst it's 500 degrees C in there, on the outside, it feels like a very sort of tepid radiator. And in fact, 500 degrees C is considered full, 200 degrees C is considered empty. Now let's imagine that there was no sun whatsoever, so there was no electricity going in here and heating the inside. It would take 21 days to go from full to empty. The system is made up of these individual cells, which means it's incredibly modular, allowing you to scale it up or scale it down depending on what you need for your particular process. These here are recycled aluminium ingots and they come from these, which are old engine blocks. And I think there's something really quite poetic about that, that an old engine block can come back as a reformed character in a decarbonising heat landscape. But that choice of material is really interesting because in an old engine block, it doesn't necessarily have to be a really high graded material, which is perfect for this application because it's not really concerned about the graded material and more about the ability to conduct heat which is why it's also mixed with volcanic rock, which is again, another really interesting choice of material, but because it has a really high density and a really high porosity, again, making it a super good conductor of heat. But how do these two things get mixed together inside a Caldera heat cell? The team at Caldera were kind enough to let me have a go and find out for myself, which meant I got to wear this rather fabulous silver suit. Maybe the best PPE worn to date, but critically, it's designed to protect me from spillages of the 720 degrees C molten aluminium. Despite the PPE, I was extremely nervous. I started by taking the hot basalt or volcanic rock from the oven, which had been heated to a whopping 600 degrees C. 
they were substantially heavier than I anticipated. I then needed to quickly take the molten aluminium from the oven to pour on top of the rocks before either had cooled too much and the liquid aluminium became too viscous. Sadly, owing to a lack of any meaningful muscles, I was far too slow. I think this process is best left to the experts. Now, if you do this correctly, you get a really good even distribution of rocks, like something like this. You know, imagine like a really good cake with an even distribution of chopped chips. Not something like this, which is the one that I made earlier, which I think would be substantially less effective. However, the really important point to remember here is that actually, yes, the aluminium is melted in order to make this so it can fit the mold. But once it's in operation, the aluminium doesn't melt. It just gets super, super hot. Now, this one was made about four hours ago and it is still so lovely and toasty and warm and it just demonstrates how much of a good conductor of heat that this mixture is. Aluminium is a fabulous material. When you take, when you take sort of original aluminium, it's nice and it's pure aluminium and you can make very good, you can make panels that can be stretched and every time you recycle it, it ends up with a bit more iron in it and a bit more magnesium or silicon and, the, and then it becomes less and less useful because it's very hard to get it from these greys to get the elements out or to sort of mix them in enough to be able to use it for something else. What the industry does is they add a lot of silicon to it and it makes it very easy to cast and this is what we make engine blocks from. Now, 2019 was the peak year for engine, car engine production which means in 2032, so 13 years later, they're all gonna be scrapped. But we also know in 2032, we're gonna be making a fraction of the number of car engines we make today because of electric vehicles that don't need car engine blocks and they don't need gearbox casings. So what we expect to happen is these low grades to become, actually, they're not particularly useful. Suddenly there's gonna be a glut of them being recycled and they're looking for applications to use them in and we fit perfectly. Please support our Stop Burning Stuff Patreon and help us to tackle misinformation about electric vehicles and clean energy. Caldera is really well suited to the temperatures where a heat pump probably doesn't make a tremendous amount of sense. And whilst there are high temperature heat pumps in development, the thing is with heat pumps is that they're all about that delta T, the change in temperature, i.e. the difference between temperature in versus temperature out. And ideally that change in temperature is as small as possible. So they're really good at incrementally stepping up temperature. But if you need high temperatures, you need an awful lot of them and that would become extremely unwieldy. Conversely, with a caldera, you're able to get those slightly bigger step changes in temperatures. So as with anything in the transition to net zero, it's going to be a range of solutions depending on what makes most sense for your specific application. If you've been watching the channel for a few years, you may be thinking that Caldera sounds familiar and that's because we featured them on the channel a few years ago when they were considering this as a home energy solution. And in fact, this one here is heating this whole building. But since that time, they've really been able to hone in on the opportunity that exists to help decarbonize heat for industrial processes. And that is such a critically important sector. And particularly when you consider just how much that impacts every part of our lives. So we think this is an incredibly cool solution. I'm really excited to see this grow over the next couple of years. So please do let us know what you think in the comments. And if you have been, thanks for watching.